Good morning, congregation. I would like to turn with you this morning to Matthew 27, verse 46. This is one of the words of Jesus on the cross. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The crucifixion of Jesus Christ was one of the most extraordinary events that ever has taken place. And this cry of Jesus from the cross has to be one of the most startling of all of the words of the Messiah. The fact that an innocent man was condemned and had to die was not anything startling. The fact even that a martyr would die was not shocking. But the fact that the Son of God would die. And it's not strange either that man would try to kill God. But what's striking is that God the Father allowed wicked men to take his own son and to nail him to a cross. And what's remarkable also is that Jesus himself, being very God, allowed men to treat him so. The Father who had declared concerning his own Son, This is my Son in whom I am well pleased, now subjects that Son to be forsaken by the Creator, the Lord of heaven and earth. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Forsaken of God. Now Jesus could utter this cry precisely because he was very God and very man. He was very man, a real righteous man, representing us in all that he did and all that he came to accomplish. At the same time, he was very God, having to be very God in order to be able to endure the burden and the wrath of God as that wrath came upon him for the sins of those whom he represented. And now Jesus cries out concerning his being forsaken by God. Now there's a mystery there. We know that God loved his own son. Jesus came from the bosom of his father. How could the father forsake his son? And how could the son actually feel himself forsaken of the father? Does God actually despise the one who is the object of his love, the one in whom he's well pleased? This cry has well said to be the climax of Calvary. The experience of being forsaken by the father, cut off from God, stands at the very heart of the atonement, the payment that was necessary to pay for the sins of those whom he represented. At the heart of the atonement stands spiritual death, and that's what's depicted by this word from the cross. He was cut off from God. The cry of the redeemed throughout all of history is, forsake us not, O God. This cry from Calvary was necessary in order to accomplish that wondrous redemption. This cry was necessary so that Jehovah God never forsakes any of his own. Adam and Eve sinned. They took upon themselves the wrath that they deserved as a result of sin, casting themselves away from and out of the garden that God had prepared for them, hopelessly corrupt and depraved, and there was no way out. Man's condition, hopeless. But God sent a way out. And he sent that way out through his own son. Jesus came down from heaven, able to live in perfect righteousness before God. And he took himself the penalty that all of his own demanded before God. The heart of the atonement is that the Messiah must endure the wrath of Almighty God for the sins of his people. He must be forsaken of his father, and he must bear the full weight of the wrath of God for sin. And for this reason, we hear this cry, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The Son of God entering into the state of spiritual death. Now this cry reveals the spiritual death that Jesus took on himself. And the context states that darkness fell upon all of the known world at this time. The Apostles' Creed refers to Christ's experience during this time of darkness as he descended into hell. Now we know in reality, hell came to him while on the cross. 
There are many explanations that are attempted to be given for this darkness. Attempts to make it just natural that there was some kind of a solar eclipse or some kind of natural event. We know better. The Bible describes this as a supernatural wonder. It wasn't night. This was midday when the sun was supposed to be at its brightest. It was midnight at midday, as Spurgeon puts it. And Christ's cry gives us the meaning of that darkness, and it explains it to us. To be forsaken by God is not to be exclaimed, explained merely as the consciousness that God is far away. We know that God is everywhere, and no one can escape his presence. Even hell finds God present in his wrath, upholding the wicked by his hand so that they don't perish, but that they experience the fullness of that everlasting wrath of God against sin. God was present here at the cross. God was present sustaining his own son in all of his suffering. But this was the darkness of judgment. God was present, and yet at the same time, he withheld his face of friendship. What Jesus experienced instead of friendship is God's wrath and God's holy, righteous anger. To be forsaken is to lose the consciousness of one's friendship with God. In the friendship with God, there's life, there's joy, there's pleasures forevermore. But in the absence of it, there is despair and death. What no man could ever do in the midst of this horrible suffering and darkness, Jesus did. He was the priest, offering himself up as the sacrifice for sin. In perfect obedience, he maintained that place on the cross actively as our high priest. And he cries now from the depths of his soul unto God, his own God, my God, my God, thou knowest that I love thee. All this suffering is not because of any sin of his own. He doesn't deny his father. He doesn't rebel. My God, my God. There's only one explanation for this cry. Jesus loved God still, even in the midst of darkness and death. And even though the physical senses feared death, faith looked to God and maintained that love of his father. And along with that, he loved you and he loved me. At this moment, your death penalty was fulfilled and you and I were set free. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. John 15 verse 13. There's only one answer to the cry of Jesus. Now, no answer is explicitly given in scripture, but we know it's along this line. God responding to his own son, assuring him, Thou art not forsaken because of anything of you, but because you stood in the place of those who the Father gave you. God answered Jesus in his soul, giving him the grace to confess, it is finished. He knew and he believed that the atonement was completed, the payment was made, and none for whom he died would perish. Everyone for whom he died would be brought to repentance, would believe, and would be brought into the victory of heavenly life. Do you know that joy? Children, young people, do you know that joy that is found in this crossword, forsaken by God for you and for me? We deserve to be forsaken by God forever. But God forsook his own son in order that we might never be separated from the wonder of his love. And so that we might live a life of thankful praise, adoration to him, the God of our salvation. He bore the torments of hell in our place and in our stead. Why should the son of the father's love be forsaken? Only one reason, for you and for me, miserable, rotten sinners. For you he suffered, for you he died, and for you he entered into the darkness of death. And for you and for me, he cried out with a loud voice, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why? That we might be accepted of God and never be forsaken of him. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, what great things thou hast done for us. Grant unto us the blessed assurance that our Lord Jesus Christ took on himself the full punishment that we deserve. 
that he bore our own shame, our own guilt, in order that we might live everlastingly before thy face. And may we, as we live in the midst of this life, experience the light of thy countenance, thy shining face looking upon us in love and assuring us that nothing, absolutely nothing can separate us from that love with which thou hast loved us in Christ. We thank thee, Lord, for thy care for us during these unusual times. Continue to uphold and to be near to us. By nature, we're tempted to be afraid. We're tempted to despair. But we thank thee for the faith thou hast given us, that we can know and hear thy word of judgment even through this virus, that we ourselves can be humbled to our knees in the dust, confessing our own sin, crying out to thee for repentance, believing that truly the end is coming and that Thou art the judge of heaven and earth. And grant, Lord, that we might know the victory in Christ, that as we cry out, we might be assured that we have been forgiven, and that we are found in Him, and that we might live then thankful, obedient lives, out of gratitude to Thee for what great things Thou hast done for us. Continue, Lord, to preserve and to keep Thy children and Thy church, we pray. For Jesus' sake, amen. Have a great day.